Welcome to Electron Line, and now for something a little bit more challenging. Here we have an object that's going around a circular path of radius 100 meters at a tangential speed of 7 meters per second. At some point, it will reach a point on the circle here where it will be 200 meters away from a spot outside the circle, which is 100 meters away from the edge of the circle. Wow, that's quite a bit of information. Again, if the radius is 100 meters, and this distance here is 100 meters, then this spot is 200 meters away from the center of the circle, and when this object is right here, 200 meters away from this point, we want to know what the rate of change of this distance is at the moment when c equals 200 meters. So what we need to do here is we need to relate this to the rate of change of this angle right here, and we'll show you in just a moment how to do that. But first, what we wanted to do is relate c to A and B in this right triangle. So we're creating this right triangle here, and we can then say that C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. A is the distance from there to this point right there. B is the vertical distance right there. Now, we also have two other distances, X and Y. X is the distance added to A will make this 200 meters, and Y and B, of course, are the same distance right there. And we have to somehow relate that to the angle here. So let's do that. If this angle here is theta, then we know that this angle here must be theta as well. Those are alternate interior angles. We can then say that Y is equal to the hypotenuse of this small triangle, which, let's see here, what do we call that? Well, that would be the radius of the circle, so R, times the cosine of the angle theta, because y is the adjacent side to the angle. Now for x, since x is on the opposite side, we can say that x is equal to the radius times the sine of the angle theta. Now we can also say that a is equal to 200 minus x. So a equals to 200 meters minus x, and now we can plug well, another thing is that y and b are equal to each other, so we can call this equal to b. So now we have an expression for b in terms of the angle. We have an expression for a in terms of x, which can also be written in terms of the angle. So this can then be written as 200 minus r, which is 100, times the sine of theta. So now we're ready to plug that into the equation, because now what we're doing is we're relating c to the angle theta. And then as we go around the circle, we'll have a constant change of the angle, d theta dt, which then will tell us what dc dt will be. So that's the strategy of this problem. So let's plug in what we have. We have c squared is equal to a squared, and a is equal to this. That would be 200 minus 100 times the sine of theta. We're going to square that, plus b which is equal to y, which is r cosine theta, r is 100 cosine of theta. And we have to square that as well. All right, so now we need to find dc dt. So before we take the derivative of both sides with respect to t, we're going to multiply out what we have on the right side. Starting over here to give me some more space. This is equal to this squared, which is 200 squared plus twice the product of these two, so 2 times 100 is 200, times this will give me 200 squared, and we have a negative, so minus 200 squared times the sine of theta, and then plus the last term squared, plus 100 squared times the sine squared of theta, and then here we get plus 100 squared times the cosine squared of theta. And this is where we can simplify some things because we know the sine squared plus the cosine squared is 1 when we factor out 100 squared. So this becomes c squared is equal to 200 squared minus 200 squared times the sine of theta. And this, when we reduce this to 1, this gives us plus 100 squared. All right. Now, we can add this to this and make that a constant, so c squared is equal to 200 squared plus 100 squared minus 200 squared times the sine of theta. And now we're ready to take the derivative of both sides with respect to t. 
and then this of course will disappear because that's just a constant so I'm just looking ahead so we take the ddt of the left side is equal to the ddt of the right side which is that quantity 200 squared plus 100 squared whoop, minus 200 squared times the sine of theta this is a 2 right there all right and now when we take the derivative of the left side we get 2c dc dt and of course looking ahead this is what I'm looking for dc dt is equal to since that's a constant that goes away and here we have the derivative of the sine is the cosine so we get minus 200 squared times the cosine of theta times d theta dt and of course if we then divide both sides by 2c we can see that dc dt is equal to minus 200 squared times the cosine of theta times d theta dt all divided by 2c and so what we have to do here is solve this equation now we plug in whatever we know now we know what c is equal to because we're told that c is going to be 200 meters we don't know yet what the angle is theta and we don't know yet what d theta dt is equal to so next what we need to do is find the angle now we can do that by looking at this equation right here let's take this equation and notice that since c is going to be 200 we can solve this for theta all right so I'm going to come down here and write 200 squared is equal to on the right side 200 squared plus 100 squared minus 200 squared times the sine of theta so we're going to solve that equation for theta first of all we can get rid of the 200 squares on both sides I can move this over here and I can divide this by this so we have minus 100 squared divided by 200 squared is equal to minus the sine of theta and of course this would be one fourth so in other words theta is equal to the arc sine of 1 over 4 and with a calculator let's find out what that's equal to 0.25 take the arc sine and I get 14.4 uh, make it 14.48 degrees two decimal places so now we know the angle so we can figure out what the cosine of that angle is next I need d theta dt hmm so for that what I'm going to do is somehow find out what d theta dt is based on this tangential velocity what we can do here and I need some board space I'll box out some space right here what I can do there is say that hmm the rate of change of the angle with respect to time that would be omega that would be the angle of velocity relative to going all the way around the circle which is 360 degrees is equal to the tangential speed right here which is 7 meters per second divided by the total circumference which is 2 pi r so I can say that the rate of change the angle rate of change divided by the total circumference in angle is equal to the tangential velocity divided by the total circumference and so what I can do now is I can say that d theta dt is equal to 360 degrees times the ratio of 7 divided by 2 pi times 100 all right what's that equal to 360 times 7 divided by 2 divided by pi divided by 100 and that gives me 4.01 degrees per second of course I'm going to have to convert that to radians per second so I'm going to multiply times pi divided by 180 so times pi divided by 180 which is equal to 0.07 radians per second wow that's kind of interesting and two pi wow let me try it again just in case 4.01 and yes it is 0.07 interesting all right so now I have my d theta dt I have my angle theta I can now figure out what the rate of change of c is with respect to time so I can say that dc dt is equal to minus 200 squared 
times the cosine of 14.48 degrees times d theta dt, which is times 0 0.07 radians per second. And of course, this would be meters squared. I'll just put a quick meter squared in there. And then divided by 2 times c, which is 200 meters. And one of these 200 meters cancels out one of those. This meter cancels out the meter squared. And so I end up with meters per second because radians is a non-unit. So working this out, I get 200 times 14.48, take the cosine of that, times 0.07 divided by 2 equals. And that gives me a closing speed. So it's minus 6.78 meters per second. And that's how fast the object is approaching this point in this direction. No, it's a negative distance because it's getting shorter. That's how fast this point is approaching this point at this moment in time when the distance here is 200 meters when the object is traveling around at 7 meters per second. That's how it's done.